I'm Bill Rowley, and I am not a professional photographer, but I've been a serious amateur photographer twice at two different periods in my life. One in the early 80s with film, but then I went and got this day job that needed uh, to be paid attention to, and I didn't touch a camera for many a long year until I finally retired, when I noticed that everybody else had a digital camera. So I went and bought one of those. And I resumed my original uh, course in photography, my original style, and then discovered that there were some elements of photography that I liked better than others. So I went down those paths farther and farther. And if I don't, for instance, take pictures of lighthouses or covered bridges or sunsets, or dogs, except my dog. And what I mostly do is macro, very close-up stuff. Uh, and most of what I do in macro is abstract. Before us here, we have actually nine pictures on the wall. Um, what these all have in common is a technique called cross-polarization, which I'm not going to explain in detail now. You can Google it if you really want to know. But it involves using two polarizers at a time. One on the light source and one on the camera. And when you do that, especially if the subject is plastic or there's a little piece of plastic behind it, you get some very interesting colors and visual effects. Um, and that's what I've done here. What I've tended to do is explore the possibilities from, with that technique um, in an almost random fashion. Um, I, I cruise discount stores and I buy things with optical properties. Plastic things, glass things, anything that'll twist light or color light or this, the technical term is mess with light. That's, that's what I like to do, is mess with light. But then for a subject, you can have anything. I have here, um, there's a feather there, yeah. shot in close up. There are bubbles that I blew with a little kid's bubble pipe. Um, there are things, bits of plastic, like this for, for instance. <laughs> This is simply a plastic glass of some sort, a, a, um, an iced tea tumbler or something that I bought at all for a dollar, and which I melted a little bit with a blowtorch. And when you melt it, and then subject it to cross-polarized light, you can get very interesting patterns and designs and abstracts. And that's a lot of what I've done here. This is melted, um, that's melted, and then the next four are, are all things that, that I melted with a blowtorch or with a heat gun to make, to make interesting shapes of the plastic. I'm from Natick, Massachusetts. I live in Northampton now. Uh, I am in this area because I attended Amherst College many years ago. And uh, when I found myself at loose ends at one point in my life, I came back to this area because I know it's, it's very nice. And um, one of the things that's available here is a, a large population of artists and art-oriented people, including photographers. So I was able to hook up with the group known as Pioneer Valley Photographic Artists. In fact, I was its last uh, president. And um, that's basically the, the group around which this exhibit coalesced, or out of which it came. I think that I'm mostly self-directed and self-motivated. Um, I'll read a book or something, but then go off on my own and do things. And the, the master photographer who's impressed me the most was Edward Weston who also does, among other things, a lot of close-ups. Um, I have a little pepper portfolio that's an homage to his peppers. And um, 
Other than that, I, I don't claim many influences, many mentors. Um, I've learned from a lot of people. That's, I, I don't mean to imply that, I, that I'm not interested in learning. Um, I've had classes at this university and that college, and um, Robert Floyd of Southampton sometimes run classes, and I uh, have had a few of his. So I've, I've done a lot, especially technical learning. My job was in the computer field, and of course I, I had some exposure to photography earlier in my life. So when it came time to go digital, all I had to learn was the specifically photographic digital information. I knew computers, I knew how to handle files and that sort of thing, and I had a, a reasonable background in computer graphics, but I needed to learn the specifics of Photoshop and, and what some of those categories are. What would I say to a new photographer? The first thing would be, be brave. Get off automatic. The first possible opportunity, don't use that crutch. Buy a book, take a class, find out what all those little buttons and doodads on the outside of your camera are for, and, and learn to use them. And it's going to be a little painful, it'll be costly, so on. But the main thing for a newbie, do it. Get off automatic, ruin pictures, expect some bad pictures and then learn from them. Ask it, you know, when you get the bad picture, ask, ooh, what happened here? I thought I really had something. I remember uh, way back when, when I was just starting in photography, some of my pictures had a nice background, blurred out and, and just not a distraction. Others had maybe the same subject, but a messy background. And I had no idea why that was the case. And then I started doing a little research and a little reading, and as I figured out that, that I was having problems with depth of field, things began to come together for me. So, the field has to do with aperture, which is f-stop, which is closely connected with shutter speed, and so forth and so on. But the, the main thing for a newbie is don't be afraid. And don't be afraid to have make some bad pictures. You will. Everyone does. 